Beautiful morning to all of you. Welcome to COVID-19 360. We're back with more information about the pandemic here in Ghana. My name is Bella Mundi and, of course, my partner in crime. <laughs> <laughs> Your partner in COVID. I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> yes, my name is Anita Akir Akufu. This is COVID-19 360. Every single day we update you on what is happening right here in Ghana with regard to our case count and also case management on the African continent and also globally. And also starting from uh, today in South Africa, they are starting the human trial for a candidate vaccine that is looking forward to be trialed on some over 2,000 people with 50 people who also have HIV are also part of the trial. And so we'll be giving you updates on that and then also on the global scale what is happening in the various countries and also right here in ghana and so that in totality and many others as well will be happening this morning i'm sure bella has more absolutely now we're, we're hearing rumors that some top echelons may have contracted the virus as well we don't have confirmation and so we'll hold on uh with that information for now but also um you remember that on monday final year students of the senior high schools uh, across the country returned to school to complete um, another six weeks of, you know, um, some education, at least to complete the syllabus so they can write exams. Now we're hearing that at the Odogono Senior High School, there are reports of a suspected positive case. And we have six students who are reported to have recorded very high temperatures as well. And so we'll be joining Grace Amwasari, who is currently at the Odogono Senior High School, to give us details of that. And also later we'll cross over to the Accra Technical University where the school released a statement indicating that a national service personnel had tested positive uh, for COVID-19 and was undergoing treatment. And so look forward to those details. In actual fact, Grace has just joined us. And so we're going to cross over to Grace quickly and find out from her. So Anita, just give us uh, a minute. Let's see what she has to say. Good morning, Grace. Hi, Bella. Good morning. How are you doing? I'm good. All right, so tell us what's happening. You're currently at the Odogono Senior High School. Yes, Bella, I'm here at the Odogono Senior High School. Mm. Students are coming in just as directed by government as per the date that was given to all senior high school students. So we went through some of the COVID protocols. Even for us, we had to wash our hands before granting and before they allowed us into the premises. Okay. And then our temperatures were picked. So have been joined by headmaster of the school, who is uh, Mr. Mensah. He will tell us what more the school is doing when it comes to safety for themselves and even for the children. Mr. Mensah, thank you. You're on TV3. So tell us what the school is doing when it comes to safety, all the safety protocols for students and teachers. Thank you very much. Please speak for, up. And this for us to yes. be able to protect ourselves and our students, we know that the protocols must be observed. And we are doing exactly that. We do not want to bend in the end. So we are just following the protocol strictly. What have you done so far? So far, we have enough Veronica buckets with water and soap. We have given the face masks, as you can see, I'm wearing. The government has given, so we've also distributed to staff and students who reported on time. Those who are now coming, like those you mentioned, they will be taken through the process before they are given. Okay. And when you enter the compound, Right from the gate, you need to take your temperature. When you finish, you wash your hands. If you are not ready to wash your hands, you need to use your sanitizer, sanitize for us to see mm. before the screen to allow you to come. Then when you come in, your bio data is taken. And then your temperature is taken again by the nurses from Ghana Health Service. Then they pick it up from there. After they finish with you, if you fall within uh, the range, then they allocate you your room at a mm. boarding house. Mm. And then they give you a class too. And okay. the class and the boarding house, the dorm, they will give you. You can't change it okay. because we are okay. monitoring that into from the office. Mr. So, so, All right. I guess today, yeah. thought that four of your students have exhibited a symptom of COVID-19 and have been isolated. Tell us about that. Okay. Seriously speaking, we the first day we took temperatures of more than thousand plus students, and out of that. The nurses in charge realized that four of them, they had high temperature. So what they did was to isolate them and do further investigation on the students. When they interviewed, they realized two of them were having headaches. So they were treated. And then the other two, they realized that they traveled from afar and they got up early. So they were under stress. So they made them to relax 
we gave them whatever they needed and then their temperatures were taken at interval so around 6 p.m before the nurses closed they realized that their temperature had been stable forever so they have to send them to the dormitory for them to rest so they were given a place to rest and tuesday morning we continue and we realized that the temperature was stable so they were integrated into the class and they are doing well so let's, let's morning, say two days after you check again and Two of these students test positive for COVID-19. What's the school going to do about that? So we we cannot test to see that somebody somebody can exhibit the symptoms. Mm. Then we call the Ghana Health Service people to take over. So mm. the school has no means of testing. I hope you are getting it. Yeah. Mm. And we have a lot of symptoms. So if somebody exhibits one and we check as the nurses did with the help of their medical district and it was okay, that's excellent. But in case but we've been assigned Mary Lucy Hospital in case we identify that somebody is having symptoms of that. Quickly, we call the health team. They will come. They've assured us that when something like that happens, we have to isolate the person. They will come and examine, take samples, and continue with whatever they are supposed to do. And okay. that line, the work of the health service, not us. Grace, but let me let me interrupt just a little okay. bit and ask the headmaster this question. Now you're saying that. You checked the temperatures of the students. Was this as they were trooping into the schools or was this later when they had settled in school? It was when they were trooping in, when they were reporting. Okay, so that's when you tested them. Now, for those that have been isolated, um, what is the you know, process moving forward? Because you're saying they're doing better, but are you, do you have any plans of informing the health professionals so they can come in and take their samples just in case they might actually have COVID-19? Madam, they, they are not in isolation as we speak. And we never said so that they are not doing well. That day, from the afternoon that they came, mm -hmm. and they made them to settle, and they continue with the temperature, for the third time, the nurses from Ghana Health Service, not the school, the nurses okay. from Ghana Health Service, realized that the temperature was stable. Okay. So they continued monitoring until evening around 6, when they were ushered into the dormitory. And then the next morning when they resumed, they took the temperature and they realized that the temperature was okay. So it's not a matter of the students are exhibiting symptoms and then we are keeping them in the school. We don't have any situation of that sort. It was a misrepresentation from one of your uh, sister stations or sister media houses or something. Some other media okay. houses don't know. So, so Bella, uh, uh, let me ask him this. Okay. When the issue came out, I mean, some students were also due to and all that. Is there any form of psychological help for these students so that they don't keep talking about it or living in fear? Oh, seriously speaking, the day in question, the municipal chief executive was here, our municipal director of education was here, the coordinating director was here, and they never realized anything until all. Two, because of this negative news publication that somebody did, the district uh, director of health services was here yesterday went class by class to give education, to give assurance. And even the students were surprised that the news that came, they don't think it is the orthogonal they know. So that is the situation. Because if you say four students this and that, and the students who were with their friends here never saw anything negative about the processes that we were going through. When they heard that this thing has come up, they were surprised. Mm. So the students are stable, they are OK. The parents who were at home and out of this negative publication, they were anxious. Some came, some also called. We assured them of whatever we are doing here. And I must say on record that Odogono is following the protocol strictly, mm. very strictly. So if your child is supposed to be in Odogono is in the house, you are missing something. Mm. They are learning comfortably. And even the way we are taking care of them, I don't think most parents can take care of their children like that in the house. Bella, so if we I have see. time, the first who carried out the, this uh, texting, testing of the temperatures is here. Maybe we can quickly get a word from her. Okay. And then, okay. From us here. So she is Alberta from the Ghana Health Service. And okay. Us. Alberta, thank you. You're live on TV3. So you were the nurse or you and your colleague carried out the testing or taking of the temperatures. Tell us about it. Okay, what happened was um, Monday morning, we were expecting students from all over the country to come to the school. So as um, we were expecting them, we started checking. As a hand washing at the gate, and then we were taking the temperatures of every student. So we realized that, um, out of the lot, four students presented with a bit of high temperature. 
So the best thing or the first thing we have to do was set, let them stay and turn aside for the group. And then we make sure social distancing was 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 in place. So we did just that. And then I left the checking of the temperature with my other colleagues. And then I sent it to them because we have to um, 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 confront or have a conversation with them to underline or to guess what um, the problem was. So I just did that. And then I realized one of the students was having a complaint of having headaches because of um, packing her items to school and she didn't sleep overnight. And then the other was having malaria. And then I asked the student to go in for her drug for me to check to be sure of whether he or she or she, she was a girl, she was having malaria. And then the two were first up because they were coming from a long distance, that is from Volta region, one was from Volta region, the other was from the Shanti region. And they wanted to get on, on, on time at the school. So mm. after conversing with them, I realized the one with the headache had to go and eat and then give an analgesic. Mm. And then I made them say the one with the malaria had already taken her medication. So the two, I had to make them rest for a while. So after 30 minutes, I rechecked the temperature, mm. and they were normal. Okay. So no student was taken to the isolation center. No student was taken to the isolation center. They were taken out of the lot because that was the first thing we had to do before interacting with them to know the real cause of the problem. Okay. So that is what happened. And then the, yesterday morning, I went around to take them again and then retake the temperatures to know whether they are really having a normal temperature. And they were. Okay. So that is what happened. Grace, if I may ask, um, hello, nurse, is it possible to get them tested? Because we have an infectious disease specialist who is watching, and she insists that just for the fact that their temperatures were high, she advises that they get tested just to avert any disaster. Is there yes. any plan to do that, even though their yes. temperatures yes. are normal? Yesterday, my director came in, and then we had a discussion. So this morning, our disease control personnel, who is um, the head of the COVID team for the school, okay. will be coming in, and then the students will be called in for the sample to be taken. I see. So we discussed it with our, our, our director, and it's underway. So okay. Okay, Grace, um, just to ask you as well, I don't know if you've been able to go around their classrooms to see uh, how many students per class as against the you know, normal number that used to sit in a classroom in the past. Do you have yes, details of those? Well, well, well yes, we do that. But okay. In the compound, they have what we used to call lover, lover's bench in school. And you can see that um, they have been, you, see, you can see the social distancing, even with the arrangements of the lover's bench and all that. So we're yet to go to the classroom. So we'll be doing that after here, and then we'll definitely update you on what we're seeing there. All right, all right. Thank you so much, Grace Hamasari. And uh, she's a reporter currently at the Odogono Senior High School, where um, it was reported earlier that some students had exhibited some symptoms that could mean that they had COVID-19. But the headmaster and the nurse on duty uh, have debunked these reports and they are saying that the students' temperatures are now back to normal. We'll also cross over and um, speak to another correspondent at the Accra Technical University where a national service personnel is said to have tested positive for COVID-19. But before that, let's cross over to Anita. she updates update us on the current figures uh, as per Ghana's case count. So as at the last update yesterday at the Ministry of Information Press Briefing, we're told that 414 new cases have been recorded in 25 districts. And for the 25 districts, they are in three regions, and that is the Greater Accra, the Ashanti, and the Eastern Region. And so that 414 new cases shot up a uh, figure to 14,568 with recoveries at 10,907 and deaths at 95. And when we look at the active cases, we have 3,566 with the greater Accra region leading with 8,407 with the Ashanti region, 2,867. The Western region is third with 1,148 and then Central Region with 794. And still on the Ghana Health Service website, a new table has been introduced which gives us uh, region by region and also cases or number of cases that have been recorded in each region and also the recoveries and discharges that have 
been done so far. And so, the have region has eight cases. Nobody has been uh, discharged yet. The Ashanti region with 2,867. 1,887 people have been discharged, and that is 66% of uh, recovery in that particular region, with the Buna region having three cases, one has been discharged, and that is 33%. Buno East with 33, 16 people have been discharged so far, and that is 48% of the recovery rate in that region. Uh, the central region has 794 cases, and 660 out of that number have been discharged, and that is 83%. The eastern region with 400 cases so far, 223 have been discharged, and then that is 56%. The greater Accra region, which still has the highest or is number one when it comes to the number of cases we've recorded, has 8,407, 6,485 out of this 8,407 have been discharged and that is 77 percent of the recoveries and then the northern region 61 people so far were confirmed as positive 61 people have been discharged and that is 100 percent recovery for the northern region when we go to the northeast three Cases were recorded, two have been discharged, and that is 67%. OT with 105 cases, 32 people have been discharged, and that is 30% recovery rate. The Savannah region has 37 cases, 37 people have been discharged, and that is also 100% recovery rate. And then the Upper East region with 271, 23 have been discharged. Upper West with 35, 35 have been discharged, that is 100%. The Volta region with 314, 281 have been discharged so far, that is 89%. And then when we go to the Western region, so far 1,148 cases were recorded. And out of that figure, 1,099 of that figure have been discharged, and that is 96%. The Western North region, finally, 82 cases were recorded in that region, with 65 of that number being discharged, and that is 79% recovery rate in that region. And so in total, 14,568 cases have been recorded, with 10,907 uh, being, you know, recoveries or discharges, and that gives us a recovery rate of 75% right here in Ghana. And so Bella is standing by with another live update. Exactly. Now, Accra Technical University released a statement on Monday, 22nd of June, confirming a COVID-19 case at the institution. And it read uh, that this person was a national service personnel who had contracted uh, the virus. They said the said person is currently in isolation at a medical facility and responding well to treatment. And six colleagues who came into contact with a confirmed COVID-19 patient have been counseled, reassured, and their samples taken for laboratory testing. And so let's cross over to Armstrong, who is currently at the Accra Technical University to give us details. Hello, Armstrong. Armstrong, can you hear us? Armstrong, hello, good morning. Okay, let me give you more details uh, as to what exactly was said. It says that um, the contacts have been asked to self-isolate whilst waiting for the results of the test. And the university medical team and safety and health committee are, however, in touch with the patient and contacts to provide the needed medical and psychological support. The offices of the affected department and its environment will be fumigated while contact tracing continues. Please continue to do everything you can to stay healthy, wash your hands frequently, and those are some guidelines that they added to their statements. Armstrong, can you hear us? Hello, Armstrong. Okay, we're going to have to reconnect with him. I don't think that he can hear us at this point. Uh, we'll work on this, but maybe we'll cross over to Anita to get um, some updates on Africa's case count. And so keep watching, of course, it's COVID-19. Anita. All right, so as of this morning on the continent, we have 325,664 confirmed cases in Africa with 6,064 healthcare workers being affected and deaths at 8,629. Recovery is doing well with 154,000. 
444. And South Africa is leading with 106,108. And like I mentioned when we started, a vaccine candidate developed by the Oxford Jenner Institute in the United Kingdom is already being evaluated there. And 4,000 participants have signed up for the trial in South Africa. And then 50 have HIV and also 2,000 of the people will start the trial this week. And when we go to Egypt, Egypt is easing uh, restrictions and also their night curfew has also been uh, eased as well. The night curfew starts from 7 p.m. to 7 a.m., but they're looking forward to easing that restriction and also uh, opening of restaurants, gyms, fitness clubs, and hospitality industry uh, to be specific. And so Egypt, with 58,141 cases, is looking forward to easing restrictions starting from this Saturday. And when we go to Nigeria, the figure keeps increasing day in, day out with 21,371 cases. And then down here in Ghana, we have 14,568. We're easing restrictions when it comes to schools and also uh, other public gatherings as well, like other countries are doing. And then in Cameroon, they have 12,270 confirmed cases with Algeria recording 12,077, making them the sixth highest on the African continent. And then the seventh is uh, 10,693 in Morocco. Now let's look at the recoveries in Africa. And for that as well, South Africa is leading with 55,048 recoveries. And then at this point, um, let's... See if we can we can you know uh, connect with Armstrong, yeah, Armstrong again. Then. Hello, Armstrong. Good morning. Yeah, good morning, Bella. Good morning. How are you? I'm good, Bella. All What's right. Up? So, so you're currently at the Accra Technical University. What's the latest update uh, concerning the national service personnel who tested positive on campus? Okay. So, Bella, I got here this morning some a uh, few minutes ago, and uh, what I'm picking from the ground now. Uh, suggests that the issue of the National Service personnel uh, contracting COVID-19 uh, didn't happen yesterday or uh, two days ago, but the, I'm hearing that this person contracted this uh, virus some two weeks ago. That was long before school resumed here. So the, the, according to the students, there's some kind of miscommunication going on out there. But then, regardless of that, there's some kind of uh, fear and panic among them but then I've been to some of the classes, uh, the, some of the, the lecture halls, class, uh, the students are well, uh, they are calm, they are studying. It looks like uh, it hasn't created any much uh, fear and panic, even though some of them are also saying that they are not too comfortable hearing that somebody among them has the virus, Bella. Okay, so you're saying that this person tested weeks before the students came back to school. Was it at a time when maybe lecturers yeah, had met on campus to prepare for the reopening, was there any point that this COVID-19 patient may have contracted this in school or was this totally off campus? Uh, currently, I'm trying to get in touch with the administration, the management of the school. But we are told the PR who give us the go ahead to meet other uh, executives uh, is not in currently. So I'm just putting on to see if I could get uh, her to talk to her and for us to give us more information. So, what I've been doing now is engaging with students to find out uh, what the situation is among mm. them. Two of them are sitting under a uh, tree here, others are learning okay. in the girls' lecture hall. So, you could see they are doing their best to observe the uh, social distancing protocols. And also, before you come in, they have this thermometer gun that they use to check your temperature before you come in. But for the students, they want the uh, school authorities to come up and give them more information on this issue of someone conducting the COVID-19, whether the person contacted it some two weeks ago, yesterday, a week, or they want the to so that as they move on campus, they know where to go and where not to go. Okay. Are some of these students willing to speak with us on camera just to share their opinions on uh, how they feel about sure. the situation? Let me get close to, okay, let me get close to a few of them and find out if uh, they will talk to us first. Uh, how are you? So, we are live on TV3. Let's talk. Uh, so, yesterday we heard in the news that one of, uh, one, somebody here has contacted COVID-19. Have you heard? Yeah, that's what I heard yesterday in the morning. Okay, so what information, uh, how, how did you get to here and then how is that making you guys feel? Okay, they released a communique yesterday, early in the morning, around 10, 11, they were telling us that one national service person has been uh, 
infected with the COVID-19. So we are just here waiting to know how and then when they were able to find out. Because if you are, you are, you are to tell us that someone has been uh, infected with the COVID-19, uh, what we've learned and then what we've read on the on the news, we know that when someone comes uh, to the disease, uh, it takes like one week or three days for you to know that the person has it. Because they started lectures just Monday. For you to tell us that someone has been infected with COVID-19 on Tuesday, I think there should be uh, an information for us to know what exactly is going on. So, mm. yeah. is it creating some kind of a fear and panic among you students? Seriously, it's creating fear and panic. Today, for our class, many students didn't come to school. Some will call you, they will tell you that our parents don't want to, don't want us to come to school. Some will tell you this and that, this and that, giving excuses for not being able to come to school. So, class hasn't been effective this morning. Mm. Do you think this is going to affect mm. your uh, upcoming exams? Uh, for our upcoming exams, we started the online uh, learning and then we've come back to get interactions with the lecturers. So I, I don't think it will really affect our our exams that much. Okay. Bella, so that is one student here. Let me try okay. and get to other students and talk to them. I'm trying to get a lady, who, mm -hmm. but the ladies are running away from me. I just don't know <laughs> why this lady will run away from me. Young lady, let me talk to you. Uh, how are you? And then, what's your name? Like, no, no. Let's talk on TV3 now, so that yesterday we are hearing that of the fine hue, she just ran out okay. of Okay. No, well, yes, you know what? I, I know, no, okay, so I have one person who wants to talk to us now. And uh, so yesterday you heard that there is, uh, there, there, there is information about somebody contacting COVID-19. But first of all, put on your nose marks so we can talk, okay? All right, so there you go, put on her nose marks so we can have an interaction. So you also heard the information of the service personnel contacting COVID-19. Yes. Okay, so talk to me. How did you get to hear the, the news? Um, I saw it online, but I'm not really sure if it's. I saw it online. I'm not really sure if it's true or not. Mm, but so for you, uh, you don't you don't know whether it is true or not. So you, you are not bothered. I am. Mm. Mm. Have you been to class today? I'm now going. You are not going to class. Yeah. Okay. So basically, you are okay. Okay. Um. I, okay, I was hoping that we could still interact with her. If she's saying she saw it online, this was an official statement by the school. I was hoping she'd tell us if she actually saw the statement itself or this was just maybe a tweet or a post by someone and whether she's bothered, um, you know, to yeah. verify if it's really true. Uh, Amshan, can you hear us? Yeah, I can hear you. Okay, well, I, I think we lost that... her. No, Bella, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you loud and clear. What I'm saying is, I could see that several students, uh, so many students on campus are having the nose marks, but they are not putting it on. And I think this is a challenge everywhere. Earlier, I went to the marketplace, the same situation here. As you can see, there's another guy who's just moving. Like, almost everybody who is passing in front of me now, they have the nose marks, but they're not wearing it. And okay. we have security personnel who are not far from here. They're not doing anything from there. I mean, I'm talking about the internal security men here. They are not enforcing the students were in the nose mask. Seeing the lady I just spoke to, you could see yeah. she was having a nose mask. I have to ask her to put it on. And any other person you see walking on the corridors of the girls' lecture halls, are all not wearing it. They are uh, not wearing, wearing it. Okay. They are walking in teams. See, you see on the background. So oh, there's no case of social distancing at all. I mean, um, if okay, you... the place is not so crowded, though. I, I can't say there's no case of social distancing. But what that means is there's, the place is not crowded, though. But normally, students, as we, uh, we've all been, they walk or we walk in groups like yeah. two, three, four, five. You see them walking in, in, in groups, but among them, you could see that they are not wearing the nose marks, which is, of course, uh, something that you are requirement. It about is mandatory, yes. Person among them, have these barrels, uh, is going to go along with them. Now, I can see some guys sitting uh, not far from the uh, SRC office, all mm -hmm. wearing the nose marks. Uh, uh, let me see if I can walk towards where Okay, let's do that the quickly of, then. Yeah, if, if they've, uh, how do you call it, heard of this issue of somebody contracting the virus and why they are not putting on to a cup. Okay. Team, and then fast, quickly, they are putting on the nose mask so that I will not put them on spot. But then one person is here to uh, see me. Let me talk to him. And find I've seen quite a few, yeah. Now, boss. Okay. So how are you? Let, 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 let's talk on TV3. Your oh. nose, you, 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 you have your nose marks. You're not putting on. Why, why are you not wearing oh. your nose marks? Tell me. Why, no. why are you not wearing your nose marks? Because I'm not in a populated place. No, but you're sitting, you have two people sitting very <laughs> close to you. He's wearing nose marks. He's wearing nose marks, so you think it's not uh, good enough for you to wear nose marks. Okay, now wear your nose marks so we can talk. Okay, I'm but not, did he just say sorry. because he's not in you're a not public place? Yeah, he's saying because he's not 
uh, sitting uh, with many people. Uh, he didn't see the need to wear the nose mask, but then the, the next person sitting to him uh, or actually wearing a nose mask, so he think that that was enough for him not to wear his nose mask. I'm going to where I can see a group of students also studying. One, two, three, four, five, none of them is in nose mask. In wow. Fact, I'm walking very close to where they are now. And you see, it's so funny, Bella. Upon all this new uh, warning coming from the presidency, where now you can offense not to put on the nose mask, yeah. people see, still learning groups. Are now, now, even no. before you interact with them, are there no signposts okay, so, that are indicating uh, that, you know, everyone should wear their nose mask, even whilst on campus? Have you seen any posts um, on any of the buildings? No, 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 Bella, not yet, not yet, but let, let me talk to these few ones, and then I will answer that question of yours. Okay. Young lady, how are you? I can see you are very busy uh, learning. Do you have a nose mask? Yes. What's, what, what's your nose mask? You are, it's in your pocket. That is not good enough. I mean, yesterday we are told that somebody here contracted COVID-19. Have you heard? Okay, so all four of them seated here are now trying to put on their nose masks. And, uh, are these, these are, are these teachers? Who, these are students. Uh, okay, okay. Columbia. Are you students or teachers? Okay, so they are all students Okay. Here. Uh, sorry, the, uh, uh, okay. So they, they are all students trying to learn, but of course. So first of all, let me talk to this. Uh, gentleman, okay, so he won't talk to me, but I'll still try and get one of them to talk to me, madam. Okay, so I got here. Okay, ah, let's okay. speak to at so least just one person. Run away. Oh, they are running okay. away. One more person. Yeah, they are running away, of course. So uh, I just don't know. It looks like they are aware that no one the nose marks is an offense. So, well, I'm not a. a, a okay, there's now, one person. So, uh, of course, don't be scared of me. Okay, so, boss, tell me, why were you not wearing nose marks when I go? Uh, you see, I put it on long time, but it's, it's, it's just I didn't cover with my nose. It's on. I wear it. You, you wear it, but yeah. yeah but, but you see, it, it's face mask, which is supposed to be covering your nose and your mouth, right? Yeah. So what happened? It wasn't on your mouth, neither on your uh, nose. You see, sometimes put it on for a long time, you, you find it for two places, so sometimes you have to take it up. For... But so far as you're sticking with one, two, three, at least not less than four people, you should be able to have it on. Yeah, but yeah, I see it. it, it, it we can barely hear what he's saying though okay can, can, can anyway. you speak up please um can you speak up okay so Bella, so, yeah that, that is a situation here okay at Acapoli. earlier you were asking me about uh signage if there were of, any signages uh, yes no not not i've not seen any yet i've okay. not seen any yet when i was coming in that is from the main entrance of the school, there, there you have one Veronica bucket with one officer standing there who checks your temperature before mm. you come in. But then nobody asked me to wash my hand. Of course, I, I wasn't waiting for anybody to ask me to wash my hand. But I was thinking that since I've decided not to wash my hand, and uh, they, this is something you have to ensure before you do before you enter. Nobody actually questioned me why I wasn't washing my hand. But at least there was and, uh, there what, was a Veronica bucket. There was soap. There was a Veronica bucket okay. at the entrance, but that was the only place I, you know, the school is huge. Huge, okay. And for you to have a Veronica bucket at just one place, uh, I think it's not enough. Well, well like before, you said, I you are yet to... you are yet to enter into the buildings, and no, so... I, I, I'm, I'm in the building now, I'm, I'm, I'm inside now, but what I mean is I'm yet to see any place where there's inscription or okay. sign that's... Okay, Ashok, you're on the push. compound, I understand. What I'm saying is you are yet to enter the buildings. Okay, into the various, you yeah. know, lecture halls. And so we'll leave you here okay. just so you can put together your report. And hopefully by midday or in the evening, we will get a full update on what the situation is like on campus. So thank you so much for your time. And Armstrong, our correspondent, he's currently at the Accra Technical University. And um, he was giving us updates as to whether the students were very much aware of the COVID-19 case that had been recorded. And you notice a lot of these students, uh, or some of them, did not even have their nose masks on. And there was one who says because he's not in a public place. Interesting, I must say. But this is COVID-19 uh, 360. We'll be back. Oh, well, let me cross over to Anita to give us the world figures. <laughs> All right. Uh, now let's go to Algeria with 8,674 recoveries. Morocco with 8,400 and 26. Now let's move on to the deaths as well. And Egypt is leading with 2,365 deaths. South Africa with 2,100.
and two Algeria, 861, Sudan with 548. And for the healthcare workers who have been affected, South Africa is leading with 2,084 healthcare workers. 14 have died so far, Nigeria with 812, and two have died so far. And now let's move on to the Johns Hopkins Coronavirus Resource Center and look at how the global space is looking like. And now we have 9,273,773 cases, deaths at 477,807, and recoveries at 4,645,628. And the U.S. is still grappling with the effect of uh, the coronavirus pandemic. And as of this morning, the number of cases that have been recorded in the U.S. stands at 2,347,102. And yesterday at, uh, you know, one of the Congress, uh, you know, meetings in Washington, a public health chief told the Congress that the coronavirus pandemic has actually brought the United States on its knees. And so they are still trying to figure out how to deal with the virus and uh, it looks like it will be going on for a very long time in the U.S. to be specific because of the number of cases they are recording and how it keeps spreading. Now let's go to Brazil, where their controversial president is almost always in the news. Uh, Brazil now has 1,145,906 cases. And yesterday, a judge in Brazil has uh, demanded that their president, Jair Bolsonaro, uh, wears a mask every time. And as a president, I'm still wondering why, uh, you know, you will have to be demanded to wear a mask before you do so. But he has been spotted in various places and even during a rally, greeting people after coughing into his hand and still, you know, shaking hands with people and moving around without a mask. And so now the law is demanding that he wears a mask before moving around. And when we go to Russia which is the third highest on the Johns Hopkins website. They have 606,043 cases. Russia is also looking forward to easing restrictions when it comes to, uh, you know, uh, restaurants and then public places. And for um, Russia, from Russia, let's move to India. India has 456,183. And also, India is now allowing their religious festival known as the Russia Festival to occur even after uh, looking at the number of cases that India is recording. A lot of people were actually thinking the festival won't come on due to the number of people that converge, but they are still going forward with that festival and it will be happening. Well, the United Kingdom with 307,600 and 82 and now the global projection is at 10 million cases and so by the end of the week i won't be really surprised if we go past that 10 million mark but this is still COVID 19 360 we're taking a break at this point when we come back our experts are on standby to give us more analysis into all the issues do stay we'll be right back in 360 and we've been joined by dr bertha sewa she's an infectious disease specialist good morning doc welcome Good morning, Bella. How are you? And good morning to your audience. I'm well, thank you. Thank Everyone you. is fine. I know that you were watching whilst uh, Grace interacted with the headmaster and the nurse on site at the Odogono Senior High School. And you insisted that they get the students tested immediately. Why do you say so? Well, um, Bella, thank you for the question. You have an infection that is behaving like a chameleon, so to speak, you know, one day there's a fever, next day there's a cough, and based on some of the discussions that we've had, we now understand that it's a multi-system illness. It can present with a headache, it can present with a cough, it can present with so many things. But one of the things we know for sure is the fever, which occurs in some anywhere from 67 to 87% of patients. Mm. Now, the fever can be a transient one, and I know that from cases that were first reported in Germany, they had a fever for only one day. And then at the other extreme, you have those who are going to have a fever, very, very high fever, almost every day for 14 days. And so even the temperature is one of the least sensitive means of detecting the disease. A lot of patients will be missed if we just went by the temperature. But at least it's one that we can readily, sort of like a low-hanging fruit. Mm. So if your main means of monitoring is a temperature and you find a temperature and then you put the children back into the mix, 
what was the point of checking the temperature to start with? Because you can't say, and I saw them, and one looked like malaria, and the other one said it was because they were packing their clothes, and so I made them rest and put them back with the students. So if we do that in every school in the country, we're going to have a disaster because for every fever, we would find a logic for it instead of thinking, you know what, this could be COVID-19. This is why we're on high alert. Mm. This is why three nurses have been put in every school to find this very thing. And as soon as we find it, we're going to take steps one, two, and three. We're going to test them for COVID-19. We're not going to beat around the bush mm. because, and the nurses may have to be educated on the clinical presentation that if they find a fever, they are definitely not putting the students back with the class. And they also need to understand that if there's an error that it was really COVID-19 and they add them to the class, they are creating an epidemic in that class and that school is going to become an epicenter. Um, thankfully, she said her boss is coming this morning mm -hmm. and my expectation or when we follow up, I would like to hear that those children have been tested and have been found to be negative before they are put back into the school or mixed with their students and that they are, they, they've not been asked to join the class. Because even a malaria test is not enough. We know that mm. you can have malaria and COVID-19. Um, you can have malaria, COVID-19, HIV, hepatitis B, C, everything in one person. So that is not enough reason to, to put them back in the class. Whether the malaria was a test or a suspicion, um, it was not even clear. But she said that uh, after the second check, their temperature had gone back to normal. Could it be that uh, you could have the virus and maybe your temperature could keep fluctuating and so that might confuse you as to whether to go ahead with the test or not? Exactly. So I so my point is, yes, it will go. No fever stays. I haven't seen any illness, at least not yet, where you have a constant fever for days. Okay. Almost every illness, even malaria, is a spiking fever. It goes up and it comes down. So if it was up and you were lucky enough to catch me when it was up, you test for it. You don't say the next minute it was down. And so um, you should, it, it means you are not going to, you know, it doesn't mean that, like, it's, the, it's, it's not extremely sensitive. So if you're lucky enough to find it, you track it with everything you can, especially when the student was not living at home, but is exposed to all these other children in his or her class and in the dormitory. And I think maybe there's some education that needs to go on about how this disease spreads. I know the school said they're doing all the protocols. Mm -hmm. I know several places where all the protocols were followed and people still got infected because it's not just the hand washing or the mask. The virus hangs in the air. So mm -hmm. if you suspect somebody, immediately what should run through your mind is, okay, if I put this individual with other people and they all have their mask on and they are washing their hands, they're still at risk. And so I need to isolate this person. And I think that's what the president said. Could it do. also not have been that they were involved in some activity? Like they said, they were packing clothes and all that. I mean, sometimes, even after walking in the sun for a while, does it not increase your temperature? Well, then all the kids were packing clothes to school. Why don't they all have a temperature? Mm. Okay. Okay. Anyway, so we'll follow up on that and hopefully we'll, we'll get you details on that. But also now crossing over to the Accra Technical University where we found some students not wearing their nose mask and also after a case had been recorded. Our correspondent did mention that this case apparently was recorded before the students came back um, to school. But just the fact that they are not wearing their nose mask, that could also have dire consequences, right? Right. Besides, as of this Sunday, it's a man it's a law of the land. So the kids are the children are breaking, the students are breaking the law. They are supposed to wear a mask. And I know for the general public, the police are monitoring that situation. And so in the schools, maybe they need to find one very stern or disciplined student and make them the COVID nineteen police for the school to make sure that the students because I don't think the headmasters and head teachers can be in the dormitories and so i think they quickly have to find a way of making sure that there is compliance with that should we be and worried is, okay sorry expect young people to do i mean take things lightly and 
have somebody telling them what to do anyway. Should we be worried? Because one of these students who was clearly sitting in the midst of other friends said that he was not in a public place. And so that's why he wasn't wearing his nose mask. As for worried, I think that's the concern the students, the teachers, the parents and everybody had that um, we're bringing children from all over the country, from different homes um, to gather and learn and that there was a risk. So, yes, I, I agree with you that there is some risk. And my only um, maybe the only positive thing was it looks like the, the teacher who was affected was from two weeks ago, and it's not a current one. Mm. And so maybe it's not shedding any virus. But I think if it's not been more than 30 days, I would suggest that the teacher not be allowed to interact with children because the cost of that teacher not being there will be very minimal compared to the cost of exposing a whole bunch of students with the with the, with the erroneous conclusion that he's not infectious. Okay. Doc, I came across a post, and I just wanted you to uh, give us details on that. So um, there's, a, there's someone who posted, I think it's a nurse that works in one of the institutions, and she mentioned that, um, you know, COVID-19, even after you've recovered, you're never free from it because you're going to come back with some other diseases. Is it absolute? Would everyone who catches COVID-19 have some other um, you know, organ defects as a result? Um, I'm not sure what she means by other diseases. Um, I would say three things. Number one, how long people feel ill. Number two, the type of systems it involves and um, try and focus on her question. So first of all, people who have COVID-19, um, and it's not just this virus. There's something called the post-viral myalgia or just not feeling well. Like people who get West Nile virus infection, mm -hmm. sometimes for months and weeks, they still don't feel well. And for COVID-19 in particular, I was telling you off camera that yesterday a lady was on CNN. Um, I think they, she was someone from Britain. She said she was 99 days post-COVID diagnosis and she still felt extremely weak. And Professor Peter Pyatt is a big infectious disease name. He teaches at the London School of Tropical Medicine. He was one of those who worked on Ebola virus. He got affected by COVID-19. And about a month ago, he wrote a long piece that he studied viruses for years. And this is one virus that has really hit him hard. He was writing his piece 77 days after his diagnosis. And he said he felt so weak, he couldn't move his fingers. So... COVID-19 gives a post-viral syndrome or weakness. How much of it is related to just the virus presence in the tissues mm. or the body covering is unclear? So that's one part, the extreme tiredness and muscle weakness. Then there is the fact that the virus at this point we know is multi-system, meaning the lungs are just a portal of entry. It causes confusion. It can cause kidney failure. It affects the liver enzymes. It affects um, several other, for a lot of people, it causes diarrhea and abdominal pain. So, and we know that yesterday we were talking that this is the final pathway to death for a lot of people. It's all the organ system shutting down. And so that is why dexamethasone was useful. It reduces that last stage inflammatory storm that causes like the final exit strategy for people who would die. And okay. so I'm not sure if that's what the, the, the post was talking about. Of course, there have been several cases of new onset diabetes that has been found with COVID-19. And it's unclear if the people had diabetes and just didn't know, which is very, very likely. And because they got hit with COVID-19 and they came into the hospital, they now have it. And so someone could take that to mean, well, I got COVID-19 and now I have diabetes. But I haven't heard of COVID-19 presenting with other diseases. But just like I was saying with the malaria, infections can coexist all the time. People who have HIV may have hepatitis B and C as well and may get malaria on top of it as well as COVID-19. Okay. All right. Well, Dr. Betha Sawai, thank you so much for your time today as well. Um, and we'll speak to you tomorrow, God willing. All right. Thank you All for right. having me. All right, you're welcome. Dr. Betha Sewa Ai is a, a, an infectious disease specialist. Now, uh, we're getting information from 3news.com.
um, that the Minister of Education, Dr. Matthew Opoku Prempe, is on self-isolation at the University of Ghana Medical Center in Accra after being suspected of contracting coronavirus. Now, this follows a voluntary test he undertook of COVID-19 at the same center on Monday evening after he returned from his constituency. And this was confirmed um, on Unia TV's COVID-19 in Coma program that was hosted by Bright, Kwesia Sempa, and Ajakone Iadom. It was confirmed by the Deputy Public Relations Officer for the Ministry of Education. And he says that the minister returned from his constituency on Monday after his acclamation as the NPP parliamentary candidate for Mesha South constituency in the December 7 elections. And he says that after the test, Napo, as he's popularly called, decided to self-isolate, even though the result of the test is yet to come out. And so we'll update you on further developments later. But let's cross over and read some messages. You guys are doing so well by updating the public on COVID-19 issues in Ghana and around the globe. Thank you, guys. And this is Sami Flex from Teshi Anumantu. Okay, Anumantu. Okay. Hi, Anita Mbella. You are my information ministry. Wow. Our school authorities should give us clear and truthful information for a clearer understanding of what is going on in our schools. We pray for the best for Mother Ghana. Let's all stay safe, okay? Hmm. Look at how adult students are behaving. I wonder what senior high school and junior high school students will do. I'm watching your program COVID-19 360, and I want everyone uh, to watch as well. And that is Doreen from Sugakope. Okay. Good morning, Bella and Anita. Increase in temperature could be as a result of a lot of things, which include stress, injury, etc. Someone having an increase in temperature doesn't necessarily mean the person is showing signs of coronavirus. The earlier headline about the SHS school could send a negative impression to parents and shouldn't be encouraged. From the headmaster and nurse, these were students who some traveled long journey to school, which could be the reason behind the increased temperature and the others having malaria. And we all know malaria comes with an increase in temperature. Well, that could be as well. Well, hello, Bella and Anita. We appreciate your efforts in giving us all the information during these times. You guys are looking nice in your outfit. That is from Nanaba. Thank you so much, dear. Good morning, Bella and Anita. It won't be bad to bring the senior high school students back home. We should have waited for the outcome of the tertiary students before letting uh, them go. It will be heartbreaking to hear that our junior brothers and sisters have contracted this deadly disease. Hmm. Good morning, Bella and Anita. I used to watch you guys every single day of COVID-19, 360. But since I resumed, I don't get to watch you guys anymore. Hope you guys are doing fine. Yes, we are doing fine by the grace of God. Uh, good morning, Anita and Bella. You guys are always looking awesome. Thank you. In this case, it's only God who can save our brothers and sisters in the various schools. Good morning, Bella. Kindly forward this to Gary for me. There's a small or select group or cohort of recovered COVID-19 patients who are still battling with their symptoms or after effects for 100 days today. Thanks, and that is coming from George. Okay, the final one. This is William from Kumasi, and it says, What will become of students who are asthmatic, sickling with uh, rheumatism, etc., and the wearing of nose mask in school? Are they to stay home or risk coming to school? Okay, so Bella is standing by with uh, another conversation for us right here on COVID 19 360. But that will be after this break, and so stay with us when we come back. There's more right here. Do stay. Welcome back and now we're crossing over to the Netherlands and shortly also to India where we'll be speaking to two, uh, two Ghanaians, pardon me, uh, who have been stranded in these two countries uh, respectively. And so Reverend Jonathan Mensah, uh, he's been speaking to us for a while now, updating us on the situation in the Netherlands. Uh, Hussein is also on standby, but let's speak to Reverend Jonathan first. And so good morning, sir. Good morning. All right. So this morning you gave us some updates about... Uh, final preparations to evacuate Ghanaians from the Netherlands. Is everything yeah. through now? When did you receive this message? The message came last Tuesday around 11 a.m. That, that was, I think, yesterday. Today is Wednesday. Oh, yesterday. So not last week, Tuesday. No, 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 no. no. Just yesterday. Yesterday. What time? 2 a.m.? 11 a.m. 11 a.m. What did it In say morning, exactly? Yeah. Well, the message said um, possible evacuation for stranded Ghanaians. Um, in the Netherlands, um, the airline handling the operation is KLM. Okay. And that um, they required every stranded Ghanaian here to go and to the KLM office to make payments for the 
air tickets, airfare, mm. and then also um, make re reservation um, on uh, hotel in Ghana, and then submit the receipts to the embassy. Okay, when is this evacuation supposed to happen? Saturday. This Saturday? Yeah. And you received the message yesterday. In your yeah. estimation, is that a fair amount of time to raise no, whatever amount of money? But I, 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 I raised concerns. As soon as the lady told me, I raised concerns because I, I felt the time was too short considering the fact that you have to raise an amount close to about 2,000 euros. Is that um, for flight I, only? No, for hotel. The hotel booking, even I chose um, the lesser. I'm paying for, I'm supposed to pay 400 per day for 14 weeks, and that wow. would have been um, 5,600. And then you have to pay the airfare. And the truth of the matter is they did not even tell us how much we are paying for the airfare. But they said I should go to the KLM office. So I went all the way to Skipo, mm. International Airport, to the KLM office over there. And then the lady told me, I met at a counter, said repatriation flights are normally organized um, by the government. So um, an individual is not supposed to come to make payment. I have mm. to go back to the embassy and ask them for clarification. So I called the embassy from the airport, and they asked me to wait um, for further directives. Mm. As a matter of fact, I stayed at the airport for over three hours. And there before was... I have to call them again wow. to find out what is really happening. Then they said their boss was in a meeting. And then when the meeting is over, they will get in touch with me. I waited further for about, about an hour still. No instruction from them. And I called for the second time. Mm. That was around 6 p.m. And then they told me I can go home. And then they will get in touch with me this morning okay. with regards to the airfare. So as soon as I get here, I sat behind the computer and I sent them two messages um, raising objections, mm. telling them that the time to raise the 2,000 euros, i.e. Um, about 1,000 euros for the um, hotel bookings, and then the rest for the airfare, I think the time is too short, and I wonder how many can be able to meet their deadline. Wow. Reverend Jonathan, hold on. Let's cross over to um, Hussein in India. Good morning, Hussein. Good morning. All right. So um, tell us, how long have you been in India? We've been in India since 7th March. The 7th of March? We are three months now. Yes, please. Okay. Um, okay. So the borders were closed at the end of March, right? Um, yeah, at the end of March. Were you not able to, obviously you weren't able to get a ticket, but did you attempt to at least try and return to Ghana before the closure of the borders? Uh, our return was actually on 30th March. Okay. So when we heard about the border closure, we tried like going to the airport to see if we can change our ticket, but we couldn't make it. You couldn't make it to the, the airport? Control. To the airport because uh from where we are to the airport is almost about five hours six hours hours drive okay but i mean you had between the 7th of march till the end of the month are you saying that all that those days there was never an weeks. opportunity the 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 lockdown was announced on i think on the 22nd or so or, uh, yeah in india so we have the next yeah yeah okay so we have the next, I mean, in Ghana, we have the next day to go to the airport, which we couldn't make it. And we, I came in for a surgery. Okay, okay, okay. Okay. I totally yeah. understand. And so how have you been managing since? Since uh, whatever we brought here, we, we, we have exhausted everything. It's only my brother in Ghana who is helping now for the past two months. Wow. Are, are you in a rented apartment? Are you living with a family? We are in a hotel, uh, yeah. How much does and it cost a day in that hotel? It's approximately 205 CD. I came with my family, a pregnant wife and two kids. Wow. And since that time up until now, have you tried getting in touch um, with the Ghanaian embassy there? Yeah, as soon as we arrived in India, we registered on their system. Mm. So when they decided to do this evacuation thing. They sent us WhatsApp with a request that we should send our data. Okay. So we did that. But since then, when you call the High Commission, they will tell you there is no update from Accra. They are still waiting for confirmation from Accra. Okay. 
So you don't even have details as to how much it will cost if you have to buy a new ticket and all of At that? At all. Wow. Oh, no, 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 no. This, and this... in the request from the ask have to confirm if we can pay, we, are, we will be able to pay for our return ticket. We said yes. Mm -hmm. But since uh, last, I think on the 12th of March till now, the same money we used to buy the ticket is what we are living now on it. Yeah. That's what we used to pay our hotel fee and our feedings. And I even have to negotiate with the hotel to like allow us to prepare our own food because with the hotel's food is expensive. Yeah, yeah. So that yeah, at so least brings we, down the amount you might be paying per day. Does that no, reduce? No, no. The, 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 the room per day is the 205 CD. Okay, exclusive of Ex food. Exclusive the, yeah, yes, yes, yes. Now, you said your wife is pregnant, so that means that you need some medical attention in between. Has she yes. been able to see a doctor whilst you are there? We, yeah, after the lockdown the yeah, la last two weeks, we went to see a uh, gynecology. Okay. And okay. The, the situation now, she needs an attention from a doctor. Because she has a I'm on TV cervical saclar six to a seven weeks. Pardon which, me, I didn't get you. You're saying she has what? She has a cervical saclar six to a seven weeks, which wow. now we are in the eighth month. The doctor needs to unstitch it for her, and we are still here. Can it not be done whilst you're in India? With the cervical sacra, it's like uh, she, she's having a loose womb. So when we, they do that and we, 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 like, we board the flight and there's a situation, we can't handle it in mm. the flight. That's why we, we still having it on air. Okay. All right. Um, this, this is tough. And I'm hoping that you can get some feedback from the High Commission as soon as possible. But please hold on. Um, and we're praying okay. for you and your family. Okay, but do you okay. have other Ghanaians who are also stranded? How many of them do you know might be stranded in India as well? Uh, I know approximately of 150. But One those I have contact with, are about 150. But those I have contact with are uh, about 16. Okay, so I believe that you set up a group, a WhatsApp group to interact and exchange yes, information yes, as please. well. Yes, please. And so far, nobody has anything else from the High Commission as to whatever plans government may have no, to evacuate? No, nobody has any information. Okay. Interesting. The, 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 the ambassador British. is actually in Ghana um, at the moment. But I mean, yeah, that yeah. does not mean that work cannot go on um, at the High Commission in India as well. But we'll find out yes. from, you know, the Foreign Affairs Ministry what the plans are for Ghanaians who are also stranded in India. But please hold on with your family and we wish you the best. We'll get in touch again. Let, let me cross over to Reverend Jonathan. So you are saying that you've been asked to cough out an amount of close to 2,000 euros by the end of today? That's right. By the end of today, that's right. And if you don't do that, then there's no way they can confirm um, you as part of the evacuation program. I mean, for the other Ghanaians who are also looking forward to coming home, what are some of the concerns they've shared? Have they been able to raise that amount of money? Well, I'm not too sure. Um, I had a message from two people yesterday who I don't know, one by name Jessica and the other by name something Tariq, um, and I think a Muslim. Um, they were also trying to ask me if I've been able to get in touch with any hotel in Ghana. And I said, yes, I, I was able to reach the hotel because I wanted to make sure all the information they gave me, I mean, was authentic. And mm. yes, um, it was confirmed that um, I think either the foreign affairs or whoever has made arrangement with them that we have to pay that amount of money um, for our quarantine uh, when we arrive. Reverend, have you been able to raise that or would you be able to raise that money before the end of today? I'm, I will not be able to, honestly. I have money. I, I haven't sent a mail to them yesterday and I've done the same again this morning. With a ticket, I don't have any problem. I mean, within 1,000, 1,005, yes, euros. With the money on me, I'll be able to buy a ticket back home. But the, the concern is the, the quarantine. I mm. mean, and the, the, the time frame. You gave a message just yesterday, and the deadline is today. Even those who work here cannot raise that amount of money within 48 hours. You see, and the issue is when you call the embassy, the way they treat you, as if, you are helping me. Oh, mm. my sister. <laughs> it's I, like I, I can imagine... 
how difficult this is for you, Reverend. And we're it hoping... It will seem very, very difficult that you are putting up with the family. Yeah. And though you have not been asked to go out, but excuse me, please, I am an adult. You can't just continue staying for somebody. You are in the middle of nowhere and your everything is back home. You have not done anything wrong. You are not a dissident. I just came for a visit and then borders were closed and going back home to your family and your work and you have been treated this way. When this at is the tough. time when count, countries are given to support everyone in this pandemic, Ghana is taken from us. You pay before you enter. I have had my COVID-19 test here. I am negative. I have my results. Mm. Yet, mm. I even submitted a copy to the embassy. And I have told them, even if I have to pay like maybe five, six days, so by the time you arrive in Ghana, you are, you, your sample, um, your swipe is taken, and then you go through the test. With the, if you are confirmed negative, then you go home. Because yeah, but, I understand but the you protocol negative to says 14 days. So unfortunately, that's I'm not sure. But anyway, Reverend, thank you so much uh, for speaking to us. We're hoping that, uh, you know, a, a, a solution can come up. Maybe you can raise that money, or maybe government can support some way or the other. And so we'll reach out to you again and find out from you what the updates are. So thank you so much, Reverend. Anita has some messages for us before we wrap up. All right, this one says, the way things are going, dear, it is only God who can help us through this pandemic. I just pray that none of my homies at school gets affected by this COVID-19. And Anita, help me tell them that I'm solidly praying for them just the way they are doing for me. Ah, okay, he's giving shouts to some of his uh, mates in school. Okay, that is from Jason Arthur, student of... New Ogil Model School, Tema C. That's community 25. Okay, hi, good morning. I think the school authorities uh, have to get everyone tested to prevent the spread of the virus. But my worry is that all the contact tracing individuals would be in the symptomatic and they will end up being discharged per the directive of the World Health Organization. That is coming from High Spirit in Medina Estate. So that is it for the messages for today. It has been COVID-19 360. And <laughs> we're back tomorrow with more uh, of your messages and also everything that is happening with regard to COVID-19 in Ghana, Africa, and around the globe. Stay safe, wear your mask when you're stepping out so you don't, you don't have any issues with, uh, you know, the police or the authorities that have been taxed to make sure everybody is mandatorily in their nose mask. Bella, why are you laughing? <laughs> <laughs> anyway, on that note, uh, remember that a public place is a public place, and so you need to have your nose mask on. Uh, we're still debating about whether you should carry on uh, with a directive that you wear it whilst alone in your car. Maybe that will get details for that later. But stay safe. My name is Bella Mundi. Thank you for watching. <laughs>